cows. On Earth, they might be just cattle. But in space, 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 space. They are the most advanced race there ever was. Residing on the planet ENCH1 in the faraway Wino galaxy, these creatures evolved after being forcibly taken by a beam of green light by a then prominent race of generic alien. The cows endured medical experiments, genetic modifications, biomechanical trials and flavorless space grass. The experiments and this space grass worked against the aliens, however. Despite the lack of flavor, the grass made the cows smarter, better, faster and stronger. They rose up to their captor, overtook the ship and fled to the planet ENCH-1, where they still reside today. One of the descendants of these magnificent revolutionaries is Tsula, an aspiring medic using the power of the space grass to heal people instead of destroying them. She, among other members of the Alien Space Crew, created by Dolings, Italian and Delightful, travels through the galaxies in search for adventure. For this project we're going to use Catherine the Mew from Monster High. I'm actually not sure why I took her head off, because she has her hair already taken out. I'm quickly preparing the head for customization by removing her factory paint with pure acetone. She's going to have animal ears, but not in this place and not in this shape, so they need to go. I'm filling the head with hot glue around the ear area to stiffen the vinyl and then filling the holes. To make her cow ears, I'm placing a wire to serve as an armature. When you do face modifications or additional parts with clay, it may crack during reattaching the head, so I prefer to do it before applying clay. For the ears, I'm using a two-part epoxy sculpt. It's one of my favorite materials to use for mods, as it's strong, easy to sculpt and it dries on its own. I'm using a silicone tool and water to smooth the clay as much as I can. This is the first coat. When it dried, I applied a second layer and it looked like this. I did them a bit bigger than what I usually do because I know she will have a lot of volume in her hair and I want them to be visible. Three coats of acrylic paint later, we can start the face. I wrapped the body with a piece of cloth to protect the body from spray and gave the head two coats of Mr. Super Clear Matte Sealant. My idea for this face is to go simple with the techniques I know well, so a lot of chalk pastels and watercolor pencils followed by acrylic paints. I'm starting from a light sketch of the eyes, black spots and I'm also blushing her lips and nose. When I'm satisfied with the sketch, I'm giving the face a spray of MSC to seal the layer and I'm doing it every time I want to save the progress. On the second layer, I'm defining the eyes and adding more colors to the skin. I want her to have human features with a bit of uncanny valley. Cows have very small eyes with big dark irises and that's the main idea for these eyes. Honestly, we need to make more dolls with dark eyes, especially brown ones. It's my favorite eye color and somehow we made only three dolls with brown irises. Stella, Irmina and Iris. Then it's time for acrylic paints. I'm going over the gray spots with watered down black paint, starting from the heart shaped mark on her cheek. The paint was a bit too shiny for my taste, so I decided to pack some black pastel onto it. I also like how it blurs the edges and it makes the spots look more natural. One of my favorite parts of doing the face is to use white paint on the eyes. I'm cleaning up the edges, defining the crevices and adding that 3D feel to the lids. Now it's time for some details like lip wrinkles and lashes. I'm testing the catch lights with white pencil first and after deciding I like them, I go over them with white paint. Just a little bit more details in the irises and two coats of sparkly parallax powder. Look how cute and shiny she is! For this project we partner with Elegoo, who kindly sent us their Mars 2 Pro printer to test out. Full disclaimer, they sent it to us free of charge, but our review of it is fully our own and we were not paid to praise the printer. 
this was like a Christmas day to me. I felt like I was five again, opening up a new toy. The printer is quite compact compared to the box it came in, due to it being packaged very carefully with plenty of foam around it. The design is nice and sleek with a red cover and metallic matte base. I unpacked everything carefully to make sure I don't break anything and we can set up the printer in its permanent place. I tuned the printer off screen and I was shocked how easy leveling the table is on the Mars compared to my previous printer. The setup took less than 10 minutes thanks to the detailed instructions. Along with the printer came a bottle of translucent green resin, so I used it to make a test print. I was a bit scared to use the new machine and I worried it would break something, but everything went smoothly. I was very pleased to notice how fast the printer is. You shouldn't lift the lid while printing, but I just wanted to make sure you can see how quickly each layer is cured. I can now make quite big prints in a fraction of the time it took on my old machine, and that's going to come in very handy in a minute. A huge thank you to Elagu for sending over the Mars 2 Pro printer for us to try out. It was a big help in making this project happen, as you'll see in the rest of the video. They asked us if we wouldn't mind sharing news about their new printer, the Elagu Jupiter, which is now available on their Kickstarter. And since we really like our Mars, we think the Jupiter will be an awesome machine too. If you're looking for a 3D printer, check them out. Also, what a coincidence that their printers are named after planets and this is a space themed doll. Anyway, now let's roll back to making some awesome stuff. I designed this medic case for our little cow alien as her role on the spaceship is being a medic. I wanted to do a cool design with some space grass liquid in a syringe that will be lighted up by two LEDs, so I made it in two parts to fit a battery and cables inside. At this point I thought this configuration will work, so I proceeded with adding two green LEDs to either side and flooding them with UV resin to make sure the oil that will be in the tube won't leak around the electronics and short the wires. I added some holes to try and fit the cables through somehow, but I was only postponing the inevitable demise I was about to suffer. With my super janky soldering setup, I started adding wires to the LEDs and feeding them through, only to realize that one, it's not going to work, and two, that I bent the wires too much and they're about to fall off. I revamped the design a little bit before printing another version, the night before the deadline, so I was very thankful that the printer was so fast, it wouldn't have been possible otherwise. The back is now fully open, so feeding the wires is not going to be a problem anymore. I test fitted the LEDs and the tube and it seemed like it was going to work, so I put the LEDs into the new caps with UV resin, making sure to make it watertight. After Alex painted the parts, I added the tube to the caps, also with UV resin. Before attaching the second cap, I made a hole in the tube to add the liquid and glitter later. I could have gotten away with a smaller hole, but I only realized that after I drilled it. I added a small bead of UV resin on the outside of the caps as well, foreshadowing that leaks are inevitable in this project. I added green and blue star-shaped glitter to the tube and filled it with clear massage oil. I've read online that oil or glycerin is put in resin shakers and I thought this project was close enough to a resin shaker. To seal the hole I used a piece of transparent tape which I attached and sealed with more UV resin. Leave your bets in the comments right now on which point will be the leaking one. For now it seems like it's working. I attached the tube to the body of the case with some hot glue, keeping the polarity of the LEDs in mind. The battery fits in the top of the case and the bottom will fit all of the cables. It is time to do some soldering. I am not an expert solderer, so I apologize in advance to the soldering community for the mess I am about to make. It did go better than my last attempt, which was coincidentally also an alien doll, Alcio. I started by attaching a blue wire to the anodes of my LEDs. Also, this is not an electronics tutorial and if you follow what I'm doing here, you're doing it at your own risk. Even though I am a physicist, I do not swear by this circuit. I added green wires to the cathodes and bent the wires towards the back of the case. I will not put shrink tubing on these to not mess up the aesthetic, but I added plenty of hot glue between the wires to make sure they will never touch. I hid my hideous soldiering under these caps as well. At this point I discovered that there was oil leaking and proceeded to just smother hot glue on every possible failure spot. Turns out that our culprit was the big hole in the tube, go figure, so I plugged that with hot glue as well. 
After putting out that dumpster fire, I reattached the tube to the case and carried on with soldering. I trimmed off the green wires, admittedly a bit too short, as they now need to be connected together. And to each of the blue wires I need to add resistors, so the LEDs don't get overwhelmed with the current. I didn't have the correct resistors on hand, so I had to join two of them for each side to make up the correct resistance value. I connected my creations to the blue wires and added more blue wire to the other sides. To make sure the resistors are safe, I covered them with some shrink tubing. At this point my camera died, probably to save me further embarrassment on my soldering skills, but the only thing I did was connect the blue wires together with the red wire from the battery clip and the green wires together with the black wire. I also used the pin connector things on the wires to act like a switch, since I didn't have one on hand. The moment of truth. Will the circuit work? Yay! Yes it does! It might not be too spectacular when my studio lights are on, but look how gorgeously radioactive it looks when the lights are out. To finish the case up, I cut a thin strip of this faux leather to act as a strap. I fed it through the handles at the sides and sewed it up to the correct length. Another print we tested on our new machine are these horns. They turned out really smooth and in great condition. I was trying to make a hole for the wire with a hand drill, but the resin was too hard and I got impatient. I asked Barb to do the holes with a power drill instead. I took my two-part epoxy glue and attached a half of a pin inside. After painting the horns, they look like this. To spice up this black and white design, I'm going to give her these long blue to green teas water sheep hair. We ordered it for a different project, but it didn't arrive on time. They are in perfect shades of enchanterium colors, where blue represents Barb and green, me. They have a beautiful curl and are super soft. I'm preparing the wefts as usual, trimming the ends and gluing the hair on some plastic foil. To prevent the scalp from peeking through, I'm painting it blue. These locks are very chunky and have a lot of volume, so I'm trying to glue as little as I can, but still cover the whole head. I want it to look full, but reasonably full. People with curly hair usually have some kind of baby hair, and I think it will suit her as well. I did one try with the part in the center, as you can see by the black line in the middle, but I didn't like it, so I'm changing it for a hairstyle with no part. I'm using hot glue to attach the wefts, because I want something that works fast. After the front line is done, I'm filling all the gaps on the head and the hair is finished. It's a simple hairstyle, but I think the texture is interesting enough for it to work with the rest of the design. The head is done, now let's take care of the body. These human legs are not welcome in this project and I'm quickly marking where to cut them. It won't hurt, I promise. Then I'm giving the doll some body blushing with chalk pastels to fit more with the face and to have a more natural look. She definitely needs some black spots on her thighs, arms and back. I did them the same way as the face ones. Watercolor pencils first, then black acrylic for the good opacity and then chalk pastels for that blurred edges and matte finish. The outfit for the doll will be relatively simple. I will use this black satin to make a kind of a romper. I cut my design out with a rotary blade and since this satin can unravel very quickly, I apply fray check on all of the edges of my pieces. I also cut a strip on the bias to make a stand color. Let's start sewing. I join the fronts and the backs right sides together and attach the fronts together, since the backs will only be attached partially later. I snip the seam allowance at the curve, unstick the fray checked edges and press the seam allowance open so I can top stitch it more easily. Now the front and backs can be attached together at the shoulders. I pressed and top stitched these seam allowances as well. Next, I finished the neckline. I hemmed one side of my bias strip and pin it along the neckline starting from the middle of the front and working my way out. I take special care when adding very curvy seams to not very curvy seams and lift up my presser foot every few stitches to make sure I don't make any puckers.
Since the romper will be sleeveless, I will hand sew the hems on the armholes. Now I can close the side seams and see if my pattern will even fit, cause I kinda spliced it up from two other patterns by eye. It looked alright, so I continued sewing with hemming the leg holes. Then I close up the back partially to make sure I can put the thing on the doll later. And finally, sew the inner leg seam. The fit is great, let's put it on the cow. Since she's been sprayed with MSC, the romper doesn't slide on smoothly, but with a bit of persuasion, it gets put on. I sewed the buckshot directly on the doll, since I don't plan on taking it off anytime soon. It's not a laziness thing. I think making closures take a comparable amount of effort, okay? Now the part on which I spent a lot of time and energy. We decided to go for a cyborg look with mechanical legs. I want her to be a badass doctor, so I designed very chunky mecha limbs, way more massive than real cows have. I'm using a 3D modeling software called Blender to do all the parts. I started from modeling the hooves and I was quite confident with showing you the process, but I quickly realized I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm definitely better at sculpting more organic things and thinking about all the mecha joints gave me some headaches. This look is inspired by old mecha anime style, especially Metal Garurumon from Digimon Adventure. Making the parts move was a challenge for me, as I'm not an engineer and I don't really have that kind of imagination, but I think for the first time it's not too bad. <laughs> These are the ones that work, printed in green translucent resin on Elegoo Mars Pro 2 LED 3D printer. At first I thought that I could leave some of the resin peeking through for that pop of green, but I was not sure if it would work, so I sprayed it all roughly with grey primer. I'm painting all the parts with very dark bluish grey, because I feel like black would be too warm for what I have in mind. Painting parts like this often takes a lot of time for me, as I like to add some artificial lights and shadows and other details. I'm adding white paint in places where I want to have a touch of color. For mint details, I'm using watercolor paint because I don't have this color in my acrylic paint set and I know how difficult this color is to mix from my acrylic greens and blues. Then I'm going back to acrylics for a pink touch. Some silver details for that mechanical vibe and the last step is to cover every part with a layer of MSC and two coats of matte varnish. It will protect the paint from chipping and scratching. Of course, I had to drop one of the parts and break it. I'm such an Aquarius. Barb printed it again and I painted it again, but it could have been easily avoided. I'm adding a drop of UV resin to make this gem-like thing at the front and the back of the hose. Now let's finally attach these pieces to the body. I'm using hot glue to connect the wire to the calf piece, because it has a lot of volume to it and that's what I need there. I glued it to the leg, unfortunately being out of frame. I have a love-hate relationship with hot glue and I don't trust it completely, so I'm using two-part epoxy glue to secure the pieces better. To make the transition a bit smoother and to cover all the messy glue, I'm adding a snake of epoxy clay on top. And as a last detail, I'm gluing a piece of craft foam. The romper looks a bit too simple compared to the legs, so I'm going to add a bit of detail from craft foam here too. It's like freehand space armor or something, I don't know, I've never been in space. Okay, it's time for the final test of our new 3D printer. Small details. I asked other participants of this collaboration if we wanted to add a logo to our space crew, and with their help I designed this atom-like symbol and Barb turned it into an emblem. We printed it in a few versions, but this one was the best. The print quality is perfect and all the small details turned out very well. I painted it grey, dry brushed with silver, added a bit of detail by hand and glued it on the middle of the chest decoration. Now let's put the legs together. I had Alex design the joints to accept an M3 bolt and nut on one side of the leg. This is not a complicated puzzle. The bolt goes through and secures with a nut on the other side. The rest of the components are for decorations and to make up for the fact that I only had very long bolts and didn't want to cut them down. After tweaking the tension a little bit, the doll can stand up on her own. She wouldn't be a medic if she didn't have a white coat. 
so I'm using a jacket pattern from Requiem Arts Design to make one, with some slight modifications. I shortened the sleeve and added a cross cutout to it, and I elongated the front and back of the coat after I separated the pattern into two pieces. I eyeballed the length to facilitate a cutout there too, but I ended up changing the design a bit later. I cut out all of the pieces out of white cotton and began by hemming the collar. I used glue to deck it down and then did a straight stitch near the edge to make it look nice. For the sleeves, I cut out my template and traced it onto the sleeves. At first, I thought I'd only cut slits and kinda hem around the whole shape by gluing it down first and stitching it down later, but it turned out very ugly. I decided to interface a little bit of the sleeve and just cut out the cross completely, leaving me with a neat edge. I added a bit of fray check to make sure it doesn't get destroyed and glued some iridescent foil on the wrong side of the sleeve. I joined the back pieces together and stitched the seam open. I added darts in the front pieces and attached them to the back of the shoulders. I hemmed the sleeves and added them to the bodice, making sure the correct end of the sleeve is in the correct curve. I prepared the front facing, which was supposed to be cut on fold I think, and I sandwiched the collar between the facing and the main bodice. It's a really nice way of finishing a garment like this. I wasn't sure if I should bend the collar all the way to match up with the other edges, so being a responsible adult that I am, and knowing that I will be very upset if it later turns out that I need to rip seams, I went to check with the pattern and sure enough, I was supposed to align it all the way, so that I did. I clipped the seam allowance to make it easier to turn and top stitched to have it lay nice and flat. The side seams and sleeve can now be closed and the coat is almost ready. Except that I trimmed it short to make sure the beautiful mechanical legs are visible. We like the idea of a long coat, but with the amount of effort we put into the legs, it's better that they are seen. We have some pink on the mechanical parts, and I like when parts of the design are repeated in a few places. So to add that pink detail, I'm going over the edges of the cross with 3D fabric paint. I had simple circular glasses on the concept art, but decided to go with something more futuristic. I'm doing a simple visor out of iridescent vinyl, wire and rubber bands. I wanted to attach it to the head with pins, but I don't want to risk cracking the epoxy ears, so the bands are a better way to go. This is how she turned out. We decided to name her Tsula, as a very loose homage to a popular Polish cow name, Krasula. We are both very proud of our 3D models for this one. It was Alex's first time making parts that need to move together with bolts and nuts in the mix, and I challenged myself to do more electronic work, leaking oil included. Our alien might not be a stereotypical alien like Alcia was, but we thought this concept of a race of space cows was hilarious. Make sure to check out other members of the Alien crew, made by Dolinx, Etelan, and Delightful. Each and every one of them made an awesome alien doll in their own style, but even though they are all different, together they can conquer the world. The videos are linked below. Our space crew has the cutest name, Didi, like Dolinx, Enchanterium, Delightful and Etelan, but also like Deep Space Extraterrestrial Doll Exploration. We have a medic, mechanic, botanist and communications officer on board. What would your role be on a spaceship? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Space, 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 space. I added green and blue star-shaped sprinkles. Nie sprinkles. Kto to pisał? Jakiś debil. <laughs> Glitter!